Welcome to our video, Japan and the World. The topic for this time is, give the self-defense forces the recognition they deserve. Surrounded by autocracies with nuclear weapons. Japan should more than ever support its self-defense forces that strengthen the nation's deterrence capability. I would like to focus on the commentary and editorial board, the Sankey Shimbun. On July 1, Japan's self-defense forces, SDF, marked the 70th anniversary of their founding. In that time, the majority of the Japanese public has come to support and rely upon them. They not only provide for national defense but also bring disaster relief assistance to suffering regions. Japan's security environment today is extremely perilous. As a nation, we look to all members of the land, maritime, and air branches of the SDF. They are trusted to live up to our expectations and faithfully fulfill their noble mission of maintaining peace for Japan and the entire world. On July 1, 1954, the SDF was formally launched with the mission of defending Japan from direct aggression. That coincided with the last stage of the evolution that transformed the National Police Reserve into the National Safety Force. It has not been due to Article 9 of the Constitution that Japan has enjoyed peace during the post-war era. Rather, it has been the SDF and the Japan-US security arrangement that has ensured Japan's independence. They have protected the lives of the Japanese people. Despite that, none of the provisions of the Constitution refer directly to national defense. As a result, under the banner of Article 9, critics have denounced the SDF as unconstitutional. Moreover, they have attacked the SDF's very existence. There was also a long period in which the peace movement was rampant, actively seeking to impede the SDF's functioning and development. It seems fair to say that this so-called peace movement seriously hindered the nation's efforts to improve its deterrence capabilities. Despite facing these headwinds, the three branches of the SDF and their personnel have continued to train hard. Furthermore, they have earnestly honed their defense capabilities. The SDF has never been deployed for actual combat to defend the nation. Nevertheless, more than 2,000 members of the SDF itself or its predecessor the National Police Reserve, founded in August 1950, have died in the line of duty. Their deaths occurred during challenging missions or rigorous training. We offer our sincere condolences for the souls of these brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for their country. We also offer our thanks to all those who have served in the SDF. That includes those who served during the period when it was under withering attack from the left. Now, at age 70, the SDF finds itself in a new security environment. This time, it may have to face off against aggressors threatening the homeland itself. This is the first time it has faced such a situation since the end of the Cold War. Threats are fast rising, including possible crises involving Taiwan or the Korean Peninsula. There are also potential missile attacks from neighboring countries. The battlefields of Ukraine have demonstrated the rapid proliferation in the use of drones, unmanned vehicles, in hostilities. There is also a growing need to prepare for warfare in new domains, such as cyber, space, and electromagnetic waves. Military affairs is a world that is literally evolving from day to day. The SDF's duty is to make every effort to ensure that it does not fall behind in the event of an emergency. Japan is surrounded by autocracies armed with nuclear weapons. Moreover, these neighbors, namely China, North Korea, and Russia, are rapidly expanding their militaries. Under Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, the Japanese government has been drastically strengthening the nation's defense capabilities. However, this effort will require greater understanding and support from the Japanese public. That includes in terms of the legal framework and constitutional revision.
We must never forget the paradox that being ready to fight increases a nation's deterrence capabilities. Moreover, being ready helps maintain peace. Meanwhile, in the event of war, the SDF will be in a position to repel aggressors. That's all. Editorial. Give the self-defense forces the recognition they deserve. Surrounded by autocracies with nuclear weapons, Japan should more than ever support its self-defense forces that strengthen the nation's deterrence capability. Commentary and Editorial Board. The Sankey Shimbun.